everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is a hobby based kit tutorial and this week I've decided to combine lots of different kits and make up a card that way. So I'm using parts from uh, January, February, um, last month's, um, I think I've got something from pretty much every one. So um, it was just quite fun. I just thought I've got all these bits, I keep them all together so um, I know what I'm working with. And um, yeah, I really like what I've come up with. So this is an envelope card or a loaded envelope card. Um, and basically this piece here slides out. So this is for you to write your message on. Um, now I haven't put any sentiments at all because um, I wasn't sure. I mean, these would make lovely wedding cards or an announcement because you've got that lovely you know, um, space there to be able to write something. Alternatively, you can decorate that even more which is what I'm going to do today, and then just keep the back for your message. So it just slides in the front there, which is the little pocket, or the envelope part, I guess. Now the difference with this one that I've done is I've made a stand, so on the back there, which goes completely flat so it fits in an envelope. I just, for me personally, um, I like a card that can stand up. Um, if it's just flat, I, or someone's got to prop it up somewhere, they just, I don't know, I just think you, you make all these you know, beautiful cards and you put lots of your time into them. They need to stand up so everybody can appreciate them. So this one here's just got a little stand there and it sits up perfectly. Um, if I just bring it up a bit closer there, you can see it's just got so much shine to it. It really is lovely. Um, it's the Hobby Base Butterfly die. These are the V&A papers, which from a couple of months back. It's the Rose die. I've used the leaves. This is the Dinky die from last month. Embellishments from a couple of months ago. This is the um, foiling that we received. Um, I've used some of that, I'm gonna use that again today. So yeah, it was really nice, and it's just another way to show you how you can mix up your kits um, and, uh, and get it all matching. So one thing that is extra is this, because I do have the 12 by 12 v &A collection myself, so I was able to match my envelope to the smaller six by six that we received in the kits. But any, a plain envelope would be fine, because although it's a six by six base, because you've got this little piece here, it does mean it won't fit in a normal six by six envelope. So this is on the envelope punch board, this is a six and a half by six. However, if you didn't want to do that, or you don't have the board, the punch board, or you don't have bigger paper to make envelopes, what I would suggest, and when we get to it, I'll, I'll point it out, but you could actually um, punch a semicircle here and have your kind of pull out piece. Um, kind of sat down deeper and you would pull it out so actually it stays all within that six by six area so there is a way to adapt it okay so I'm just going to pop that over there so I'm going to use today I've got my for my card base I've just got a sheet of 12 by 12 and this is just some of my own stash and you basically want to cut this in half at six inches um, it's reinforced, the whole 6x6, six six, the back of it is two pieces of card sat on top of each other. So what we're going to do now is just get rid of that one, bring in your scoreboard and you want to score at 6 inches. That seems to be just coming under ever so slightly, I'm pulling mine out a little bit, but you want to score along the 12 inch side at 6 inches. Okay, grab your other piece again, score at six inches, make sure that's all correct. Okay, and then fold both of them over, like so. And then what's going to happen is you're going to sit one piece over the back of another, like so. So now you have this style, okay. And I've done similar before, the um, gatefold, drop down gatefold card that I've done with past project, um, products was like this. Um, so once you've got them like that, what we're going to do then is cut. So if you put a little, um, I'm just going to grab a pencil here, because um, you won't see this pencil because it's all going to be stuck in, but if you put a cross there and there, so I put a cross down, you can just see there the bottom. Um, right corner of the left hand big square, the outer square, and on the other one is the outer right square, and it's the bottom um, left there. Okay, get rid of this again, bring back in your trimmer, 
and then what we're going to do is the side that's got the cross on you're going to score maybe if I do a pencil mark first just so that you can see so you've got your cross down here this is the in the bottom left hand side of this particular one and you just want to do a pencil from the top left there down to the bottom right and then pop that through your trimmer if you don't have a trimmer just cut along that line with your scissors so I'm just going to lie this in make sure the pencil mark is in the track there and start from always start when you if you you want to end up with a point if I just bring that up a little bit more always start from the flat side so then you won't buckle your edge and you'll get a nice point there okay so that's one side now of that coming together keep that because you might want to use that to um, die cut the flowers which is what I done for I'll show you here okay so to make sure the flowers matched this is what I die cut my bits and pieces from and then with the other one so this cross is on the left and it's in the bottom right hand corner there so again get your pencil and ruler and you're going to go from corner to corner again but this time it's the top right hand corner down to the bottom left and then again pop that in my trimmer so in this instance now I've got my point at the top so I will cut from the bottom up like so okay so you can rub out the pencil marks if you want to but like I said you're not going to see them at all so now that is going to sit perfectly over the top and then that one and that one are going to go over but we're not going to stick those down yet all you want to do now is stick this piece onto there or that piece onto there it's entirely up to you if you've got one that's maybe cut a bit differently and you want to hide it then just decide that way but there's no right or wrong as to which one you want to stick down first so I'm going to grab my wet glue here and just okay so just line it all up and with my um, bone folder that and just go along and just spread out all that glue okay so that is now our card base okay so you can see now that pocket that's going to form okay sorry I didn't push record again um, so next you need a piece of five and a quarter by five and a quarter which is this piece here um, now we got six two pieces um, sorry six pieces of six by six in the kit so this is one of the pieces left over you then want to cut it down the middle corner to corner now because this is a directional piece of paper I'm actually only going to be using the bottom right of this because I want it to obviously face upright so now when I sit that in there you get that nice quarter of an inch border around it there you can see it better if I, there we go okay now if I was to use that piece in there you can see now the pattern's going the other way which actually looking at it isn't a bad thing I could use it but me being me I don't I want to use that <laughs> so I've got another piece of the same card um, and I'm just going to trim it down because I don't I just cut it from six by six so I just need to trim it a bit more and pop it in that side so if you're using paper and it doesn't matter which way it's going then you'll just need one piece of six by six however like me if you do want to make sure that you've got it facing up then you'll need to cut two pieces of the six by six okay so I've just trimmed my other piece down so I've got one piece that's going on the front like so just move it around until you get your border equal and then that one will go underneath so you want to stick these down first before we actually stick the card together um, like so okay so I'm going to stick this one down first so now you want to stick whichever one over it's entirely up to you you could go left over right or right over left I'm going to stick with right over left and what I've done is just put a very light pencil mark just on the paper there and then you know that from that pencil mark down is where you can glue okay and then just fold that over and stick it all down and if you can see the pencil slightly then let's see just rub that piece out there like so. okay so now you have this and then all you have to do is just pop a little bit of glue just inside at the bottom there if you want to run a little bit more along you can you can put tape in there beforehand but it's literally just to just to tack it in place because it's only got that very you know thin piece of card that's going in it's just to stop it obviously dropping out the bottom but I mean you don't really have to faff about with 
a strip of uh, tape or anything like that. There we go. So now we've got the pocket. So that's all done. So now we will move on to the decoration and the card that's going to go inside. Okay, so you're going to need a piece of five and a half by five and a half, and this will sit nicely inside, giving you that same border at the top that you have all over here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to cover this whole piece with this piece um, of foil transfer. So again, one of the kits two, three months ago, we received these Crafters Companion um, foil transfers and I've got this whole piece here and I'm going to sit it right over the top so it's going to come right over the edge and I think that's going to look really cool so like I said this one you won't write your message on the front it will be on the back and I'm probably going to mat it again with a white piece of card so I'm going to sit this over the top so what you do with these is there will be a backing so remove the backing so the clear piece you can discard or keep. Some people like to, I know I've done it before, put it on top of this just to help um, it not maybe damage your cardstock underneath, but it doesn't, I don't find it really makes that much of a difference. So just cover the whole area, so I'm just making sure, and it will have a low tack, it's a bit like a masking tape, just to keep it in place. But I've just made sure I've got an even kind of overhang there on all four sides. So that's that piece. And then you get a lollipop stick inside and basically you just want to rub that over the whole thing. And basically you're transferring the sticky image underneath onto the card under. So I'm just rubbing over the whole thing. You can just use your finger if you want. The lollipop is what you need to use for the actual um, foil itself but it gives you a good pressure to make sure that it's all stuck down this way as well. Okay, I don't know if that's picking it up. You can just see, oh, there you go, perfect. So it's just transferred all of that sticky image onto the card. So the key to this when you're using a large piece is really go over it. It doesn't matter how long you do it for until you are confident and now there's nothing sticky on that reverse side. Now that would make a nice window sheet, so I'm going to keep that because that would be nice in a shaker card. So um, another way there to recycle bits and pieces as well, make them last even longer. So now that's all done, I'm going to lift it up because it's got a little bit of tack on the corners. Flip this over so the foil doesn't stick to anything else. I'm just going to... It's okay. And then we received this roll of gold, but I'm working with silvers today, but this is the gold and I've still got loads left. So we've got a whole two meter roll there, but I'm gonna use my own stash and that's the silver. So I've just got a couple of sheets of silver foil because I'm gonna need two for this piece. And I'm gonna stick one, try and do half and half, and it will stick, can you see? how oh, it just sticks down so again you don't have to worry and I'm going to overlap that one slightly okay and then this is when you use your lollipop and just rub over it and it will you will see the transfer the image start to come through because basically you always lay your foil with the right side facing you so the silver facing you because this is actually a clear film over the top um, the silver is all underneath and by doing that, it means it, it sticks on directly right way up. It won't go the other way anyway, so even if you put it in wrong. And you can just see, it just takes... It's much easier this this um, next um, stage than the, the first one, making sure the image is actually all transferred. And the foil will start to lift up, because once that silver has transferred, it's then just the plastic, there's no stickiness, because obviously that's all covered, so it will just peel off. I'm going to go over to this bit here, before I lift it up, make sure everything... And you can go back into it, so once we pull this off, don't worry, if you've missed bits, you can go back in again. Okay, so I've just spent some time just going over, rubbing that, so I'm going to start from the bottom here first, and you will see... I just lift it up, how oh, it's transferred, and like I said, if we miss any bits, don't worry, we will go back into that, like 
like so. Now I've got a little line there, so what I'm going to do is grab this piece here, never stick the clear back over onto anything sticky because it will then um, stick down onto your paper, it will, uh, onto your cardstock, it will be, uh, yeah, could ruin it. So you're just going to go around now and just kind of pick up, but I just bring that up there. Can you see how cool that looks? So now that whole piece, and it's not sticky at all, is going to go inside here. In fact, what I'm going to do as well is round off the corners of this. So I've just got my corner rounder here. So it's a gorgeous pattern. I absolutely love that. Really, really do. And then pop that in there like so. And you can see now you start to get a really cool effect so keep any bits like that that would work still for a nice strip but always discard those other bits and pieces there because you won't need them so next we need to do the tab and all of the flowers okay so i have die cut five of these flowers which are the dinky die um, the x cut dinky die that we received last month's kit i really like this flower um, and you can see there it has got an impression on it which really did show up with the Miri card that I used on I think it was last week's or the week before um, and then the butterfly die which is the hobby based precision die um, I've just used and die cut that twice and that came in one of the past kits as well so then I've got a sheet of my own Miri card here and just a two inch circle punch and I'm just going to punch out two circles there does that one come through? Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, and they are going to be for my tab and I'm going to stick them together and like I said you can have one half over the front showing if you want but I'm going to have it I think hidden I don't know now I'm looking at it let's see when I get to that bit let's decorate it first so these are basically going like so and then they're going to have these big silver embellishments in the middle which again came with the kit so first of all I want to get these all stuck down so start with the middle one and you're basically sticking it so that it overhangs half of it overhangs but it's actually sticking onto this card here you don't obviously want to make sure none of it sticks onto that bit there um, did this one go over the top or under under let's just pop that one there just so I can kind of follow there I am. And then I'm not too worried about all the bits in the middle because I'm covering it with the um, what you call it the the gem there. Pop that one in. And it's all this decoration now that brings the card together. So once I add those leaves in, um, everything looks quite flat at the moment. But once you start lifting it all up with the decoration that's what does it so that's those bits all together then I'm going to pop these on um, cut those ones there I'm going to pop some Tombow again I don't trust the adhesives on a lot of these I like to put some more on and that way I know it's definitely not coming off okay so with that same Miri card I've just cut three bases to so just the bottom part of the rose die that we, again we received in past kits um, and then basically just trim off just the leaves and these are going to be what we just pop in underneath the flowers so 12 all together and basically just as I've done with this one here is just kind of Put them wherever really I'm going to try and mirror what I've already done and just get some tweezers just to lift up the edge because you've only popped the glue in the center and just feed it underneath like so and kind of move it until you're happy and just stick it down so just work your way around all of those flowers you can add even more if you want I mean I've just I think 12 is enough but by all means you know go to go to town with it it's entirely up to you okay so they are now all stuck down and you can see just it's just so shiny 
Um, I love Miri card. I think it looks brilliant in your paper crafts with your cards and stuff. So anyway, now we've got the two butterflies. Again, if you want to do these in Miri card and have even more shine to your card, go for it. So I'm just lifting up the wings like I always do and pop a little bit on the body there. And you're just going to literally sit this one directly over the top. If you want to use different colours, I just like to tie in whatever the colour of that piece was. So in that instance there, I've got the cream with the cream there. And then pop a bit of glue on the body and pop that one down about there. Now if you wanted to pop a sentiment, I will recommend doing one here. Maybe have it coming out underneath the butterfly's wings and then have a flag tail at the end here. Um, or you could have a circle sentiment or something there as well. So, um, But it's all coming together nicely. So now with this one, um, I still haven't decided whether I'm going to do half and half. Now I'm going to stick it towards the back. Obviously you can put it over if you want, but I'm going to sandwich these two together like so and then with a bit of red tape I'm going to pop it quite high up because you're only having a little bit of this sticking out like so pull this out and just make sure it's obviously in the middle I've got about half an inch showing and stick that one down also with this, if you've got any bits that may have gone onto your car that you don't like, just get a rough brush, just like you would with your gilding flakes. You can see a few little bits coming off there, and it will just take off any excess that you may have. Okay, so yeah, so and now on the back, obviously that looks nice there, and then you can put a white piece of card there if you want, and obviously add your sentiment, and now that can slide in and out really easily. Like so. So now we just need to put our stand on and make the envelope. So I've got a piece of card here which is um, seven and a half by four and you need to score this. It's a slightly different one to what I've done on there but I'm using the card I've got but it just shows that you can have all different ones. So pop it a little along the seven and a half inch side and you want to score at three, six, six and a half and seven and then you're going to fold this one down the main one so you've got the two same pieces there then you're going to fold the one the next one under then the next score line over and the last score line under so this is your tab so you will have a tent and then a w shape underneath this piece here is what we're going to stick down. Oops, I'm just going to run again while well, I've got this red tape here. It's half an inch wide so I'll use a strip of that and then just make sure that it all sticks down nice and flush. And then the side that you've stuck is the side that you're going to stick to your card so the front there is nice and neat. Let's get rid of this. So just go and burnish it again, now it's all in its position. Again, didn't even do it the first time, I just thought it doesn't matter. So now it's a nice crisp stand. So like I said, the side with the join is the side to add your glue. So like so, flip your card over and then you just want to make sure that this runs flush with the bottom of your card and as central as possible and just again get your bone folder there underneath okay so that's your stand all done and then it just will obviously kind of pop open anyway as it's taken um, out of its envelope an envelope in an envelope and um, and it does stand up there we go okay you can obviously just play around with that if you want to put more bling in there and stuff you can as well but um, yeah I think they're really different so now just to make your envelope so you need a piece of 10 by 10 and I've got my scoreboard here again because I've got that 12 by 12 paper pack I'm able to make matching envelopes um, but yeah just check yeah 10 by 10 which is a six by six and a half so the first score line is at four and three quarters so 
pop this one in, grab the little score tool. So what did I say it was? Four and three quarters. So just line this up here at four and three quarters. Punch and score. I always flip mine right around the opposite side and do it as well. And then you just want to line up the score line with this score tool here. I do have a full tutorial, as I always mention, on how to use this um, envelope punch board. So just check that out um, on my one of my playlists. So that's that done. And then I like to corner punch my edges and then just burnish all the score lines. And then choose, I'm gonna have this as my bottom. So I'm gonna run my tape along these two inside smaller sides and you wanna do it on the, the bottom half. Of whatever side it is that you're sticking this one up okay and then stick that all down like so and then I always put another little bit up there and there's your envelope so I also did have a piece of card that I'd already prepared as well and this is four by three and that's just to stick over the top again just so that you can write who it's to um, if i was posting this i would put this inside a brown envelope again just because i like to protect the envelopes um, so I, I only really literally need to put the person's name on this it's not like i've got to put their full address but if you're just using the plain envelope anyway or plain paper it won't matter you won't need to do that so there you go so grab the envelope and always put it in that way this is the six and a half inch length, that's the six inch, and it all folds up nicely into our envelope. So yeah, I really like it. I think it's really quite different. It's got quite a, a wow factor again, and they both stand up really nicely. One, two, both with matching envelopes. So there you go. So this week is a mashup of lots of different um, previous kits. Um, but I think it's a nice way to show off that you can mix them all together and still make really cool wacky things which is what I like to do so this is a nice shiny project for you hope you like it um, if you are interested to sign up for the hobby base kit um, the deadline now for the August kit has just passed that was the 21st so you've now got until the 21st of August to register for September's kit. That seems really strange saying September. I can't believe how quickly this year is going. But there you go. So um, I'll share all the links to the Hobby Base Club um, in the video description below. So um, it will have all the information there for you. And I have it all in my blog as well. But until then, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.